Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this morning, uh, our organist uh, could not come due to, I guess, an emergency with her mother. So uh, the praise band is going to help us out with the music. Uh, so, and, uh, and I'd remind you after church, if you want something to eat, the Ladies Guild is uh, serving a breakfast and a vacation Bible school registrations uh, forms are in the newsletter. Uh, please uh, use them uh, with your own children or invite others to come and be a part of Vacation Bible School. And uh, the air conditioning is out uh, upstairs, but I walked up this morning. I didn't think it was too hot. We could go up there and if, it's, if you feel it's too hot, we'll come down here and, and uh, have the class in the transept. Uh, the Kids Craft Day will be held in the multi-purpose room from 11.30 to uh, 1.30 today and uh, please note the change in location and today is also Central Illinois District Scholarship Endowment Sunday and if you would like to help support uh, students who are attending the Concordia colleges and uh, for and studying for the ministry please take an envelope and uh, from the, at, they're at the welcome center and then uh, this Tuesday the joint uh, circuit pastors will be meeting here uh, at uh, 10 o'clock and there's a communion service uh, and anyone of you are invited to come and join at that communion service uh, this includes the Altamont Shelby and Effingham circuits. Uh, with that, let us begin with the first hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone, not not with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of the Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Am I on? Yes. Ladies, that was just outstanding. Brought tears to my eyes, which isn't hard to do, but uh, that was outstanding. Thank you. Our prayer for the day. Almighty God, you have called your church to witness that in Christ you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may, we may proclaim the good news of your salvation so that all who hear it may receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 10, 34 through 48. Peter preaches the gospel of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is poured out on the Gentiles, on the Gentile hearers. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John had proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one anointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from the, from the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle today is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. We are born of God and overcome the world through faith in Jesus. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and pay His commandments, obey His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is He who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. It is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning of verse 9, and it centers in loving one another. We abide in God's love and experience the fullness of joy. This Holy Gospel, according to John 15. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be full, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. It's going to be a cappella. And... Uh, Last evening, I guess you'll have to pronounce the uh, second verse as you see it printed out the best you can. You get to sing it in uh, uh, Haitian language, I guess. And so, uh, we'll... Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. In Acts 14, we read, When they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith for the Gentiles. These words are spoken in the book of Acts about Paul. He had been on a missionary journey. Things were not always easy uh, because they faced persecution, opposition. And yet Paul, notice what he said, God opened doors. Uh, you know, you give as a congregation money to help the school in uh, Haiti, and uh, you're going to hear a presentation. But as I thought about it, and after last night's presentation, Haiti has so much voodooism, and isn't it wonderful that the schools are there and that you're helping in some way to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to a land where there is so much voodoo practiced. And these young people are getting their minds 
filled with the good news of salvation in Christ. And all we can say, God is opening doors. We'll let you take over. Before I get started, there's three readings I want to read to you. They're real short readings, and we, we read these in church on Sunday morning at Haiti. The first one is Isaiah 60, uh, verse 3. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The second one is John 8:12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the way of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the last little verse is Psalm 98:4. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Those were the readings we had at our, at our church. And I just want to reiterate on something that Pastor just said. When we went to Haiti. One of the first things you had, to, you had to get out of your mind was looking at the extreme poverty these people live in. They have absolutely nothing. And sometimes it's just worse than nothing. Um, it reminds me of the story, and I told uh, Keith Logan this, about the young man that was walking along the seashore of the ocean, and there are thousands and thousands of starfish laying laying on the ocean, and he would pick one up and throw it back in the ocean, pick another one up and throw it back in the ocean, and a man asked him, why are you doing that? There's thousands of them, there's thousands of them. Well, that's how you look, have to look at Haiti. You've got to focus on what you can do because the, it's just overwhelming what the, what the country needs down there. So what Trinity Hope is doing, we're feeding these kids probably the only meal they've had if they went to school Friday, the only meal they've had until they come back to school at noon on Monday. It's very, very common for them to go for a couple of days without eating. Very common. We heard that all the time. Um, so that's a really neat part of the ministry. All the money does go to feeding these kids. They're real careful with that, and you'll hear about, you'll hear about that a little later. I'm going to get on with my presentation now because we church ran over 15 minutes last night because of pastor. Not because of us, because of pastor. <laughs> all right. Going, this is just on the road to uh, go to church. It took us two and a half hours to get to church. Here's the church. The church service itself lasted three hours. So this hour and 15 minute service should be a breeze for you folks. Here are the kids that sat right opposite of us. They sat there for three hours. This little girl was the only one that wanted to get up and go see her mama, I guess. The rest of them sat there just, just perfect there right across from us. Of course, we were looking at them, they were looking at us, and they are seeing all these white folks, and we are seeing all these black kids, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, Brenda talking to the kids, I, I think. Pardon me, Rosie. Oh, yes, the women sit on one side, let's see, they sat on the, uh, they sat on the pulpit side, the men sat on the lectern side, so. And Rick, where's Rick? He left. They clap a lot during church, a lot. All their songs, real good. There's Pastor uh, John Philippe, and there's Keith. Keith's going to talk about his sermon. Uh, Pastor John, he was a, uh, a lawyer for the UN, and he quit being a lawyer, and he said he needed to be a pastor. He needed to come up here and build this church. And with his funds, he built the church. It's, it's smack in the heart of voodoo land, so we know that a lot of these people that are coming to church are getting persecuted by their voodoo, voodoo friends and neighbors. Probably can't see this, and I won't dwell on it too much. There's a red flag right there, right in the middle of the screen. That's a voodoo worship shop, worship site, and this is a voodoo sign um, that the person on the end is dripping blood out of something that's been, been a sacrifice of some kind, but Voodoo is, is a predominant religion besides Christianity. There we are as a group with, with the kids at church. Church service is just over. Um, go ahead, Rosie. They, they served us a meal at the, at the end of church service, and it was a traditional meal of beans and rice and a little bit of goat. I don't like goat. I found that out. But anyway, I ate it. I was grateful. 
Uh, they did have ice cold Cokes. I don't like Cokes either, but they were really good. <laughs> Dina and Jeanette with the kids, they love getting their pictures taken. Just me waiting to get my, waiting to get my helping of beans and rice. Here's the river that a lot of people had to walk across to get to get to church. The women would just hike up their skirts because they're all really well dressed and come on to church. They'd climb over the mountain, hike through the river, and come on up to church. Uh, just some local kids that we, we found and played frisbee with them. And now we have our school visits by Jeanette. Okay, I'm supposed to do a reading, but I don't have my paper. Okay. Um, hand me your books on. I'll let you guys do the reading on your own. It is um, Matthew 25, 31 through 40, and it's the verses that talk about um, if I was um, hungry and you fed me, you know, if I was in need and, and you gave me things and, and who are we supposed to help we're supposed to help everybody and when we've helped those people then we've we've helped jesus um okay i'm going to talk about the school visits this is a lutheran church that we visited on sunday um that was just on we passed it on the road it's a church that a nashville church that my um sisters go to they sponsor this school this is a typical classroom it shows the desks it's got dirt floors, the um, boards that they can write on are about four inches wide. Um, that's about it. Um, the first school that we went to that had students there was Boston Salt School. It was um, up in the mountains. We had 105 students in this school. We had to ford water 16 times to get to this school. Dave likes to go off-roading, so he really enjoyed this part of it. Um, the roads really did look like jeep paths at times. This is the school building in the background. Um, as you can see, it's not real well built. It's a rather old building. 105 students in this one-room school. They had four or five teachers. I don't remember exactly how many. They separated into classrooms by these um, chalkboards. They moved them to the back so that we could present things to the kids. Um, there's the kids eating their rice and beans. And this school is the school that St. John's here sponsors. This is Chatelaine. Chatelaine was one of the wealthier schools that we visited. Um, the kids there actually had books. They here, I think they had just got done praying or singing. They, they love to do both, and they do. We, we, every school we went to, the kids sang to us. Um, every school we saw them praying and praying before they ate. Here's their food. Um, the older kids would help the younger kids. Uh, there's Ashley with some of the students. Ashley is Rosie's niece. Um, this was the school we went to the second day. Um, it was in the inner city of Gona Eves. It had 35 students that were in attendance that day. Um, probably the poorest school that we visited. Um, but the kids, it, the name of the school was Jubilee, and it was an appropriate name for them because the kids were truly happy. These are the kids that taught us how to sing in Creole. Um, and there's Holly talking to some of the teachers, and the guy in the red shirt was our interpreter the first three days. Um, the teachers there, make anywhere from $60 a month to zero. These particular young teachers made nothing. The principal of the school made nothing. The pastor made nothing. It was in a very, very poor part of Gona Eves. They taught hoping that they would get some experience and would later on be able to get a job that paid. Um, there's Ashley playing soccer with the kids outside. And the next school we went to was La Renaissance. It was in Port-au-Prince. It had 150 students, and it was on a mountainside. And I mean, it was literally on a mountainside. The roads outside were about at an angle like this. Um, it was a beautiful views from up there, though. The kids, there once again, they're just in one of their classrooms. They also had books at this school. Um, the upstairs part of this 
uh, building did not have a roof. It was still under construction and they still had construction materials laying around. Um, that's the view from upstairs. And that's just, that's Rosie telling her Bible story to the kids. Um, the next one we went to was Heart of Worship. It was an hour and a half drive up into the mountains. Saw lots of beautiful scenery that day as we were driving up there. It was the largest school we were at. It had 275 students in two different buildings. The buildings were old houses um, that they had converted into school buildings. These actually had some glass windows in them. It was the only one we went to that had that. It actually had a chimney. Um, every day we'd start our day off and um, we would tell Bible stories to the kids. And I guess I got ahead here a little bit. Okay, Keith would introduce us first of all. So we all learned how to say, introduce ourselves in, in Creole. And then he would test the kids and see if they could remember our names. Okay, now here's Rosie. Rosie's Bible story was on um, the passion of Jesus, and she had pictures from um, our passion plate that we had here, and the kids really love seeing the pictures. They don't get to see that very often, so we, she told the story and passed the pictures around. Uh, here's Brenda. Brenda's from Nashville, Tennessee, and she was telling the story of Pharaoh. Her husband Steve told the story of the lost sheep. But here Brenda's teaching them um, the song of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, which they really like to dance to that. Here Ashley is teaching them how to sing Jesus Loves Me in English. And then like I said on that one school we went to, they taught us how to sing it in Creole, so then after that we could sing with them too. Uh, Dina is telling the story of Daniel in the lion's den, and when she talked to the older kids, she would tell them the story of um, Noah's Ark, and they really loved acting like animals. Holly is uh, telling the story of Esther, and Holly did something unique. She actually told it in French. Um, so none of us were quite sure what she said, but the kids all understood her. The rest of us had to have interpreters. Holly didn't. Um, Dave is telling the story of Zacchaeus, and then after he told the story of Zacchaeus, um, I taught them how to play Zacchaeus on boomwhackers. And boomwhackers are those plastic little pipes that you see, they're different lengths and so they make different tones. They just hit them against their bodies and they make different tones. And so we taught them how to play Zacchaeus and they had a lot of fun with that. We, we usually made the teachers do it first and they liked to laugh at their teachers. Um, okay, Dina. Okay, this is a picture of the kids washing their hands. Before they could eat, they all had to go outside and wash their hands. And in order to do that, a teacher or other student would have to pour water over their hands. Then they would take a bar of soap and have to pass it back to each student in order to wash their hands and then rinse their hands again. Okay. And this... <laughs> Okay, and this picture shows Jeanette handing out the spoons. We took 600 spoons down there, so our, our suitcases were mighty heavy. But we realized a lot of the kids did not have any spoons. They were eating with their hands. And so um, whenever Jeanette got to this particular student, she had ran out of spoons. And uh, that student just started crying because she thought Jeanette had no more spoons for her. So we let her know there were more in the car, and she was over, ran with excitement. And this shows the kids eating their food, and it was really amazing because every student had to go through the process of doing all the hand washing, then praying, and then waiting to be seated the whole class before they could eat. And they had not, some of them, eaten since the day before. So for them to have that kind of patience was really amazing. And this shows all the goodies that we took down to them. We took, uh, Rosie brought two suitcases of school supplies, which I think some of them were donated by this church. There was anything from crayons, scissors, uh, coloring books. And so we handed those out. And then we handed out the toys. Uh, we handed out balloons, jump ropes, frisbees, soccer balls. And the kids loved the soccer balls. And that's a group of us holding the toys that we took down. 
Okay, and this is us learning the song, how to sing the song in Creole. And this is, is uh, now I can't think of her name. Brenda, sorry. Blowing bubbles, showing the kids how to blow bubbles. And this is Keith throwing a Frisbee. And it was really funny to watch the kids try to throw a Frisbee. A lot of them had never seen one before, and they would try to throw it sideways and every which way, but some of them were actually got pretty good at it. And this, they loved that Keith had the principal get up and jump rope. They just thought that was the funniest thing. And, uh, but the principals did it, and they got quite a laugh over it. And this shows one of the little girls jumping rope. And this is um, Ashley playing soccer with the kids. And by far, the soccer balls were their favorite thing. They just loved playing soccer. And this shows Jeanette and Dave with the boom whackers. They taught the story to each class with the boom whackers. And then at the very last school, we got, got to give those kids the boom whackers. And one of the teachers actually learned how to play. I think this teacher did so that she could teach everyone in the school how to do it. And now it's Rosie's turn. We encountered lots of people in our visit to Haiti, not just the children, but the adults too. This is the principal of our school, Chatelaine. And this is the kitchen, one of the kitchens where they cooked our food. I'm sure that many of you, when they, we said, we're going to feed the children, that we had pictured a cafeteria just like ours. Well, this is one of the cooks in her kitchen. And this is how she served the food in, in stainless steel bowl, bowls. And these are our cooks in Chatelaine. So between the two of them, they make $45 a month. That is a huge salary for them. But they split it between them, how they see fit. And one of the other things that we did was visit home visits. So we got to meet the families and see the houses where our kids lived. This mom and her son who goes to our school, um, she's in a wheelchair. Back in 2010 when the earthquake hit Port-au-Prince, she was a secretary in Port-au-Prince. Unfortunately, her building she was in collapsed and she can no longer walk. So she's in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Her mother lives with her in an, 18, or in an eight by 10 room. So she and five other people live in this room, her whole family. There's no restroom, there's no kitchen. It's basically two cots and a table that holds all their things. She had not eaten for two days when we saw her. We gave her a 25 pound bag of rice, some oil and some other foodstuffs for her to feed her family. But I'm sure she fed most everybody there. But again, there's very little. We prayed with her and got to know her. She was very open and honest. Sometimes it's, it's really hard for people to open up. This is the second family we visited. She had, her and her husband had five children and they also lived in an eight by 10 room. And we got to go in the room too. Um, she actually had a, um, a line for the clothes, which was a little different, because most of the other places were, were uh, piled. But one of the things you might have noticed in our pictures are the kids and the people are very, very clean. They dress up for church. The women all had dresses on. They're very clean. And when you realize that they probably took uh, a bath in the river, or they carried, hand carried their water from a water fountain that is maybe one per a block or two blocks, but they had to carry all the water for their family every day, just like in the Bible. 
and I got to hold the baby. So here's Holly talking about our Trinity hope. The scripture also tells us how it's important to be good stewards of the gifts and of the abundance that God has provided to us. And, you know, the story of Haiti, I feel, is not one that is unknown to us in the United States, even though many people don't travel there. Um, the engaging people and just the vast scope of the need in that country has made it one where it's the object of many humanitarian projects. So millions and millions of dollars have been raised to uh, deliver to Haiti. But then we hear in the news um, in various reports and studies that are done that tell us how almost none of that money ever makes it to the actual people who are in the most dire need. And so for me, it was really, really important in going on this trip to study the state of the Trinity Hope Feeding Program so that we could make sure that the precious and limited resources that we of St. John's are sending to this corruption riddled country are actually going into the mouths and the stomachs of the students there. So there are many things that Trinity Hope is doing to ensure that our resources are being used correctly. The first thing is that schools that are sponsored, so that means an outside organization like St. John's or another church, that can only happen after the school's been in the program for a set period of time. This makes sure that the population and the attendance of the school is stabilized before an outside group comes in and is pledging money to support it. <clears throat> At the beginning of the school year, the students are all weighed. So the feeding program directors, Trinity Hope employs 16 of them throughout the country of Haiti. They're all native Haitians. They go into the schools and they weigh all the students. And by doing that, they put them into categories. The youngest or the smallest ones are fed one and a half cups of food every day. And then it goes up from there. The older ones, the, the largest ones, will eat three cups of food every day. But so by having this precise measurement of both the weight and then the food that they're allowed to eat, Trinity Hope knows exactly how much food they need to buy for each school each month. The feeding directors go to the schools twice a month. One of the visits can be announced, but the other has to be a surprise visit. That way they're seeing the school in their natural uh, state and the school can't you know, necessarily prepare and get things in, in order before they come. The feeding program director, when they're there, they will track the attendance, make sure that the principal has been taking attendance on the daily basis as they're required to. And then they also have to go and look at the stu uh, food storage location. It's required that the food is stored in a locked location. And so by tracking the attendance and by having these strict portion controls in place, everything is databased and it's trackable. So the feeding program director goes there in the middle of the month, based on how many students have been there that month, he will then know there should be X amount of food left over. So for next month, if, if at the end of this month they calculate, well, you should have 10 pounds of rice left over because so many students miss you know, various days throughout the month. The next month, they're gonna buy 10 less pounds of rice. And if the school has made a mistake, either in not tracking the attendance correctly or by over-preparing or overfeeding or underfeeding or doing something wrong with these calculations, the school has to make that up on their own. They are then obligated to pay for the extra food. The reports, this is what you're seeing on the screen right now, the feeding program director creates this report every time they go to the school, and then those have to be submitted monthly back to an administrator in the United States who verifies the information, who checks it. So if there's any problems, it can be identified and corrected quickly. <coughs> there's 119 schools currently in Haiti that are being fed by Trinity Hope. They all participate in a, what they call shared support. So this means the schools have to contribute financially to the program as well. Most schools are contributing about 5%. This gets reviewed periodically. And if, for example, our school, Chatelaine, we went to the visit and we noticed like they seem to be in pretty good financial condition. They have books, they have paper, they have supplies that a lot of the other schools don't have. So they will be reviewed and they may be asked to contribute a higher percentage going forward. <clears throat> the schools are also responsible for providing the cookware, um, the fuel for cooking the food, whether that be wood or charcoal, bowls and spoons. 
and then they're required to pay the cooks at the rate that's dictated by Trinity Hope. The food is also purchased all from local vendors in Haiti. So Trinity Hope builds these relationships with their vendors, and then they also create and track reports on how much they're spending on rice and beans and corns in these, in these various locations, so that if they have a vendor who is, uh, you know, maybe marking the price up a little bit higher than others, they can go to them and again, in a very data-based way, say, you're overcharging me. Can we do something about that? Can you get this price back down or do I need to consider seeking out a new vendor? So I was so impressed that they run this program like a business. Um, they are using the money correctly and wisely. They're making sure that it gets where it's supposed to go instead of being sort of just, you know, fettered away by who knows what in this, you know, crazy place. And it's also important, you know, Trinity Hope employs a lot of people through this program. They're seeing the level of detail that goes into running a successful business, basically, and they can learn from that as well. You know, based on what I saw, I don't think that the leaders in that country so far have been setting a good example of what it means to use resources wisely or fairly. But maybe if enough students are um, learning Christian values and getting a Christian education, maybe that can change. And in every school that we went to, it was boldly proclaimed to the kids, this food is a gift from God and we are giving it to you because he loves you. So now we'll get the lights back up and we're gonna continue with our prayer. Gracious God, our Father and Protector, we humbly thank you for protecting the mission team from St. John's while we traveled to, from, and in the country of Haiti. We ask that you would watch over and protect friends made in the country, continue to bless and support Chatelaine School, that your word would be proclaimed within its walls and outside from the mouths of those students who attend its classes. Please continue to bless the ministry of Trinity Hope so that more children can receive proper nutrition and Christian education and that their country would be freed from the devastating darkness of the voodoo religion. And I think this report was a wonderful thing and isn't it awesome that we as a congregation would be able to help feed these people down there, not only their bodies, which they need to have fed, but also their souls uh, and that they one day would be able to be freed from uh, the voodooism that is so strong in their nation. Voodooism is nothing but satanic and, and so uh, people live in fear of what can be done to them because of voodoo. But when Jesus comes into our life, he who is in this world is not stronger than Jesus. For Jesus overcame uh, the power of sin and death, and in him we have the certainty of eternal life. And for that we say thank you. Thank you for the report. Let us show our appreciation with the thank you. Our tithes and offerings will now be received to the Lord. Christ Jesus for all people according to their needs. Alpha and Omega, we acknowledge that you hold us all and all things in your good hands. When we become overwhelmed, help us to trust that you are always good and you are at work to accomplish your purposes in our lives. Grant us faith in Jesus who has overcome the corrupt systems of this world and fullness of joy that comes from abiding in your love, Lord, in your mercy. God who makes all things new as our risen Lord Jesus has overcome the corrupt systems of this world, we ask you to renew what has been broken by greed, lust, and pride. 
in both the public and private sectors rejuvenate systems of government, commerce, health care, industry, and service that people may become valued more than profit or power. By your grace and spirit, please continue healing the brokenness of individual people at every level of our societies in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, who is trustworthy and true, you give us pastors to speak your word on your behalf. Grant faithfulness to these men that they may serve as under the cross, ever pointing others toward the Savior. Likewise, visit the sick. Be with Pastor Gall, Cindy Esch, Alma Hamrick, Carol Klein, John Jackson, Tom Kester, and Carolyn Barnes. Also be with Justin Brown, who has surgery coming up. We commend them to your loving and gracious care, and we ask that you would look upon all other members in the congregation who are enduring any kind of affliction, and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit with your love and tender mercies. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Beginning and end, you hold the past, the present, and the future. We give thanks to you for our loved ones, for all the saints who have fallen asleep. We ask that you would be with the family of Lloyd Tarrant, who was called from this life, and also the family of Jake Winling, whose mother was called from this life this past week. And be with all the, uh, the loved ones and all the saints who have fallen asleep in Jesus. Grant us faith to follow Jesus during our days of pilgrimage and bring us at last to your kingdom where you dwell with the saints in unapproachable light. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And whatever else we have upon our hearts and minds, let us take the Lord in the prayer that he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. The way
Well, we thank the group for sharing this wonderful news for us about Haiti. And if you have any questions, they want you to be sure and talk to them about it and be able to even share more. They would like more time. I must have improved in what I said today because <laughs> I see it's only about two minutes after. Wow, thanks. <laughs> Greet each other in the 